Hi, this comes from David Hasselhoff to Parafratic. I have a original kit car uh, in my garage. Congratulations on Kit Tesla, which is cool. Hats off. One man can make a difference. <laughs>and hello kid zippers it is me your favorite or second favorite michael knight very fractic and this is the grand finale of the kid tesla series i don't understand well it's our project to take the world's only real self-driving level three autonomous vehicle this model three and turn it into the real life incarnation of what the fictional kit from the 80s was really meant to be an intelligent self-driving car that talks back i must say i have my doubts about this <laughs> Well, back then, you were just the stuff of dreams, Kit. But now, I mean, this car can basically make me a coffee. What an idea. It is a good idea. Whatever you say. Make me a coffee, is what I say. Because as I said back in episode one, doing it the other way around, taking a Pontiac Trans Am and putting all the tech from the Tesla in it, is basically impossible. I or certainly it? hope so. <laughs> or is it? Well, stay tuned for that. But for now, in episodes one to three, what we've achieved so far, in case you missed it, is this. secretly saving the world quite like a flashing red light on your car's hood. And since the last episode, Kitesla has been saving the world, making waves in the press, and spreading smiles to Knight Rider fans wherever it goes. <laughs> Is it talking? Yeah. <laughs> that is so awesome, dude. And yes, this voice box is something else that a lot of you thought was awesome, which I didn't expect. But as we do a teardown of it here, I'm sorry to report that Think Geek, who made it, are no longer around. So eBay's your best bet for that. Or if you're feeling really adventurous, you could even make your own. And if you wanted to build your own one of these, I recommend PCB Way. Make great quality, better quality than this. PCB starting at just five bucks. Box bucks. And back in part three, I laid out the final mission, which was to return to El Mirage Dry Lake Bed, where they shot the Night Rider opening titles in 1982 and recreate them fully with Katesla. And as you Night saw, Rider. we did exactly that. Maybe I should do it with the real kit next time. Hmm. Anyway, now you get to enjoy the story of some of the final enhancements that we added to Kit to achieve the intro that you just saw, including auto doors, auto trunk and frunk, I mean bonnet, sorry, hood, uh, wheel arches, that long-awaited black wrap, and much more. All right, with all that said and done, it's time for you to enjoy us making this car less grey. Unlike me. Now.
Now, although I explained every episode I did, that cost was a huge preventative factor of getting a black wrap on this car. It can cost up to $8,000. You guys just kept insisting I had to give it a black wrap. So fine, okay, you guys win. Apologies for the delay getting it done. I had to save up the funds. But if you want to support the channel on Patreon and get ad-free early access to videos just like this, feel free. But don't worry, for now, we just told Baby Fractic no more diapers and it actually worked out really well. She's six months old, fully potty trained, so a bit of a win-win. So let's get her defied and prove that sometimes a midlife crisis can be wrapped up quite nicely. So I'm really confused. It looks like they've lifted Kia Tesla up, put a whole new hood on it, and they're putting the wrong color wrap on it. Oh, sorry. Just realized that's not my car. And having finally found it, while we do some cleanup here, I can confirm that for the glossiest, night rider black, we've gone for the very latest 3M 2080 G12 vinyl. And each section of the car gets its own sheet of vinyl, meaning there are a lot of offcuts. For example, on the front boot here. I mean the fruit. And if you watch really closely, you'll see we're also adding some wheel arches to really beef up the car and match those new kit wheels better. And I think they're really good. It. You guys were right. I should have done this a long time ago. This really feels like the sleek, dark night the kid is meant to be. In fact, he's gorgeous. You're so gorgeous. I know. <laughs> oh, kid. And by the way, that wasn't just fun editing. He genuinely answered that line of that song that was playing on the radio randomly with that response. Classic. You're gorgeous. Whatever you say. But if you thought a black wrap was cool, you ain't seen nothing yet. But first, Flag have asked me for a super quick fact check, sponsored by Reality. Oh no! Yes, it's true, because sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. And I do completely understand that headlines about new tech being controversial and bad. I fail to see the logic of that statement. <laughs> me too. Gets more clicks than, for example, a Nissan catches fire. And I'm not getting political here. This is just something I, I genuinely find data interesting. Uh, so let's take a look at it now. EVs like Tesla are so expensive. False. I certainly hope so. <laughs> False. The total cost of ownership over five years is on average $15,000 less, not just because of ever rising gas prices, but cars like this never need oil changes, yearly services, and so on. Side note, you can lease a Model 3 for about $367 a month. And this particular one is a company car and was bought with a loan. Yeah, about those rumors that all YouTubers are somehow rich. That's not asking a lot, that's asking a miracle. That's right, kid. I wish my bank account had got that memo. There would be a miracle. Two, EVs are worse for the planet. I know. No, false. While the initial battery manufacturing is not good for the planet, although that's improving every day, EVs pay off their carbon debt after 13,000 miles, continuing to a huge CO2 reduction over their lifetime. For one thing, there's no tailpipe spewing fumes into the air on every single trip you make for 10 to 20 years. Is that a fact? It is a fact. Three, self-driving cars kill more people. I certainly hope so. Kid, you're not, you're not really following the point of this. That is actually false. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. Here's why. For every 10 million miles driven, self-driving cars lead to 30 less fatalities compared to human-driven vehicles. Four, Teslas catch fire more often. False. Yes, you see it more in headlines, but comparing 100,000 gasoline cars with 100,000 electric cars, for every six electric cars that have a fire, 63 gasoline cars do.
Seriously though, I genuinely hope they were okay. Five, Teslas take ages to charge. False. I used to have to stand at a petrol pump watching my money disappear, but now I just plug in when I get home and the car charges at nighttime cheap rates while I sleep, just like your phone. Oops. And supercharger speeds are improving regularly. It actually now takes 15 minutes to add 200 miles of charge. Just enough time to pop to the amenities for a muffin and a wee wee. I need more data for my information pack. Six, Elon Musk is an idiot. True, false, sorry, I, I don't know. I don't think about it, honestly. Iluma. When I get into this car, I get into this cabin. I don't climb inside Elon Musk. Uh, wow! I just appreciate this vehicle and I love it. I love you! And I am appreciative of all the incredible engineers who built it. Pusula. I detect a certain tone in your voice. <laughs> I'm being sincere. Oh. The one where you're convinced you've come up with a brilliant idea. The next thing you know, you're doing something foolhardy and I'm in my surveillance mode. Very cool. Seriously, I tell everybody, it's like driving a spaceship and I love it. It's a cross I have to bear. <laughs> but if I do think of one man when driving Kitesla, it's the Hoff. Let me arrange for it to take you for a spin, okay, Hoff? I can, yes. But why would I want to? <laughs> okay, you coming? Hoff off. Great. That concludes the fact check. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But if you thought a fact check was cool, you ain't seen nothing yet. You see, there's something that Kit did in a couple of episodes. It's always stuck with me. It was this. Nicely done, Michael. Yep, Kit's self-opening auto doors. Now, in reality, spoilers, there was a guy in there disguised as a seat, as you probably know, doing the driving and the door opening. No, seriously, there he is. But now, 40 years later, I think we can actually do the whole thing for real. Now, back in episode two, as you saw, I perfected a way to call Kitesla and have him come to me wherever I am via my wristwatch. But now, I want him to also open his door when he gets to me. Because honestly, who has time to open doors manually anymore these days? Plus, it's probably the closest I'll ever come to having a butler. Probably. Thank you for agreeing. Well, anyway, I found a company called Handshow that makes not just auto doors with auto handles and soft clothes, but an auto trunk and front to boot. No pun intended. There's always a pun intended. But first, just for fun, because I know thanks to the Knight Rider historians where that scene was shot, let's recreate part of it with a shot for shot remake starring Kit Tesla at the exact same gas station, petrol station. Hey Kit, I need you, buddy. Of all the irresponsible behavior to leave me with my keys in the ignition and my doors open. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. And that was actually Kit Tesla's first time at a petrol station. Bless him, he didn't know where to go. And now, for his first time getting auto doors and auto trunk and front installed. It's all great fun, but what about Kit driving to pick me up and open the door like I want him to do? Well, for that, we can use a bit of visual trickery like they did in the show when they were speeding up shots and stuff, but I think he can actually do most of it himself. So first, we're gonna follow Puppy Practic over here 
can have Kit drive up to this point by himself just to test it out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's struggling with this uneven terrain. It, it, it won't go forward unless it knows it's safe to do so. Let's go and reset it and try take two. It's actually struggling to understand. <laughs> oh, that's not good. I think we'll go rescue it. It's meant to be the other way around. Now, as it happens, there's a much more forgiving and potentially more fun location that we could film this at, just here. This looks like it could be uh, the set of the acid pit from that Junkyard Dog episode. In fact, the acid pit is very near here, although we couldn't get permission to film there. So he's not quite in the right position, so I'm going to just adjust the position remotely. I'm actually using the app here, as you can see. Start forward and backwards. Got him to go backwards. Off he goes. I wonder if he'll go back all the way, actually. That could be a good start position if we take him all the way back. So for this I'm using the summon command and you see it has this button come to me. So I'm going to hold that down and he should come to where we are. That was not bad at all. Okay, now he's in the right place. Perhaps arguably the easy bit is to go back and we've got this unlatched door button here. So let's tap that, see if we can get that shot. Ready? Beautiful. And we can use the app or the watch for the other commands just for fun. And I'll show you those right now. We can take it off the trunk. goes and we can open the front trunk <laughs> yes we can close the, at least we can close the front trunk boot imagine if kit drove to rescue me and just opened the boot instead of the door luckily there is a little button here and that's how we do that and just because we can with a bit of visual trickery, what about all three at once? I guess it's not the same without the music. And just before we film the big scene, it's time to mention one more mod to the car. Because back in our monthly retro show, we unboxed these rings from Kanik, which aren't key rings in the traditional sense, but are literal rings that are keys. You see, they replace the card that you would normally tap on a Tesla to open it, because they contain an NFC transmitter themselves that you can pair with the car, and in turn link it to your unique driver profile settings making this the closest that we've got to a biometric scanner for Kit to let you in. So here, as you can see, I'm literally just fist bumping the car and it's open sesame. And as we see, the door automatically starts closing as soon as the car goes into drive or reverse. Time for me to film my starring role. I'm going to run this way and jump in the car. They're coming, Kit. Try that again, take two. One more takes, I didn't feel right. We'll do one more. 
But I realize the main problem is that I look like I'm having too much fun because uh, I start smiling when I get to the car. So uh, engaging serious mode, I reset to a slightly different position to get a good old run up. And after a bit of special effects tinkering, just like they would have on the original show, to make the door open closer to when I get to the car, which incidentally we really don't want to do at any kind of high speed because they damaged the real kit quite badly the one and only time they did it, as you can see here. And with the addition of the all-important star of the show, Puppy Fractic, as well as a few photoshopped in elements, because why not, here's the finished edit we've ended up with. Come on, let's go. Yes, this way. I'm here, Michael. Are you all right, Michael? I am now, buddy. I am now. There you go, not bad for an amateur production, but the important thing is everything you see your Tesla doing, although it's edited and pieced together, it is doing itself. And this piece of footage will be premiering at a cinema near you on the 31st of February next year. And after I told them about that whole idea, my friends at the Knight Rider Historians on YouTube decided to try it out with their screen used kit. Oh no! Hop in, Michael. I think we can catch them. Who do you think did it better? Yeah, I agree. The Hoff. Guys, I am running out of ways to improve this car. I mean, we could add a, a massage module. <laughs> That was the speed bump, not the massage. Uh, or those ejector seats, or maybe an eight track cassette player that only ever plays synth pop remixes of the Knight Rider theme. And if you think Tesla should team up with Universal to offer a fully licensed Kit Tesla version of the Tesla Model 3 and the Roadster, of course, drop Elon Musk an email. I'm sure he'd appreciate it because he doesn't get many. But after seeing that dry lake footage, I realized we actually missed something. You see, Kit didn't have visible headlights, apart from the ones that popped up at night. Or was it at night? So I smoked out Kit Tesla's headlights, as you may have seen in some of those glamour shots. And I think he looks a lot more sinister, like the, like the dark night coming to save the day. And with all that done, I'm going to raffle off the car for one of you to have a chance to win. Yeah, I'm serious. And here's why. Life's about the journey, and I've had all my fun. But besides that, so many of you have told me in the comments how much you love Kit Tesla that I decided, why don't I let one of you actually have the chance to enjoy it next? Besides, he told me he wants to see other people. Also, with a new baby, 99% of the trips that we take are in the family car. Why? It's just the way it is, Kit. Which means I can't take you anywhere and I have to leave you in the driveway where you just get lonely and, I don't know, probably massage yourself. Are you kidding me? And as you may know, if you've seen my I Bought Kit series, I've got a Pontiac now. And I've taken that for a few long trips, and honestly, it's an amazing car to drive. And I'm really, for those 1% of the times that I'm out on my own doing runarounds out and about town, why not just take it, Kit? And I have very grand Trans Am plans of what we're gonna do with Kit, a major upcoming project here on the channel. And the proceeds from the competition are gonna enable me to keep doing these fun things to share with you and keep spreading the Kit love. And I've joined forces with Rafael, who will be hosting and operating the raffle here in my home country of the UK. Though entries are of course open from anywhere in the world, with free delivery of the car included. Now Rafael are trusted by many top brands and have a brilliant trust pilot rating, and are just a good bunch of people all around. Check out their FAQ for any questions you may have. And with all the work that's been done to Kit Tesla, including the upgrades like full self-driving, black wrap and auto doors and auto everything, this car has a prize value of around $96,000. Thank Devon for business loans. Lend me $20. <laughs> and I'll be giving 10% of the proceeds to St. Jude's Children's Hospital, a cause very close to our hearts and where parents never receive a bill. So there it is, the project is done. We've turned a real self-driving car into the real world kit where the rubber meets the retro road. But remember, in a world of tech and nostalgia, the journey is just as important as the destination, especially if you're in a car that talks back. I detect a certain tone in your voice. <laughs> yeah, you got me, Kit. 
Well, thanks so much for watching this series, and maybe I'll see you down Nostalgia Lane. Maybe driving Kit Tesla yourself. I'm jealous now. And although this is the finale, remember, every season ending is just a setup for a reboot. Well, until next time, just like No Rider reruns, remember, subscribing is free, so smash those buttons like you're hitting Turbo Boost. Come on, Kit. How about one last spin? I wouldn't miss it for the world. All right, hit it. You okay, darling? I'm so sorry. Very sorry. She's okay. One man can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics. Lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes. Should we go for a walk? <laughs>